A strike was scheduled to commence on Saturday, September the 18th, 2021. But um, healthcare workers have come together to suspend that strike and give the federal government a 14-day break, a 14-day ultimatum to go ahead and implement all the agreements that they reached in December 2020. And we're discussing that now with a doctor, Dr. Ifani uh, Kasme. He is a former spokesman of the Association of Medical Lab Scientists. Good morning, Dr. Ifani. Dr. Ifani, can you hear us? Okay, we'll try to reconnect with um, Dr. Ifani there. But what we're seeing with Juhesu is something that has been dragging on for far too long. And um, they basically have gone on strike many times over the implementation of, you know, the agreements that they had with the federal government December 20, 2020. And that really seems to be the bone of contention. When will the federal government implement the demand? Yeah. Um, Dr. Ifani, can you hear us? Clear. Yes, I, I want you to first of all let us know, like put this on the table. What exactly is Johesu asking for, and what's the challenge with the federal government getting it done? Uh, thank you very much. I must uh, uh, posit that um, the most patriotic health workforce we have in Nigeria are members of the Joint Health Sector Union. You know. Since after our meeting with President Muhammad Buhari sometime last year, and he did appeal that we sh Yes, just following up on what he said, um, yes, the president did meet with Juhesu and appealed to them that they should be more patient, more understanding with his government, his administration, that they were on top of the matter and that they would definitely make sure that all the demands are met. But the issue is now came about when we have Chris Ngige come out in the media to make statements about... Um, according to him saying that no doctors were being owed salaries yeah. and um, the fact that the NMA came into the situation and there was, the, you know, there came to be a conflict between who should be negotiating with the federal government. Uh, Ms. Dr. Ifani, can you hear us? Seems uh, it's a struggle with uh, connecting with Dr. Kasmir Ifani this morning. Uh, the conversation really is centered around what happens next with Johesu and the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, of course, have been the legal uh, you know, aspects of it where they were seemingly ordered to go back to work. Um, the NARD, of course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, didn't respond to that. The Minister of Labor, like you mentioned, you just in the news, it was one of the stories that we took this morning saying that their threat to go back on strike is uh, unscrupulous or so, so, some, something like that. Um, so, of course, this, all of these conversations really, really affect Nigerians the most because it's Nigerians who get. Uh, to be at the hospitals and have less yes. medical um, um, workers attend to them. Um, what will the next 15 days bring? You know, and if the NARD is on strike and Juhesu intends to go on strike also, it means that the whole healthcare system you know, is, is going to be on you know, snail speed mm. and uh, almost nobody working except private hospitals that a lot of people cannot afford uh, to go to. So um, what will be the federal government's approach? What is important? How urgent is that approach? Um, are some of the important questions. Dr. Ifai, uh, once again, can you hear us? Good morning. So just to uh, bring us up to speed with what's on the table here, um, they're asking for a review of the 5,000 air hazard allowance. And I don't think doctors, you know, feel that this is commensurate with all the work that you do, all the sacrifice, all the health risk, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. They have to be in those hospitals, offer care to those who are suffering and go back to their families. You know, a heightened risk of, you know, dying. There's been reports of lots of doctors who have passed on in Nigeria because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And, you know, they have also come out to protest these um, um, health workers and their unions that, you know, the families of these people have gotten no compensation from the federal government. So this hazard allowance is one thing that's on the front burner in addition to salaries that have been owed these workers. Um, and one question really that I have to ask is how many more 15 days or tomato yeah. would continue to be given? It's something we've seen time and time and time again. At the end of the 15 days ultimatum, what happens next? Another 15, another 15 days, another days. extension? Let's see what Dr. Ifani thinks. Dr. Ifani, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yes, please continue your train of thoughts on the strike and the 14-day um, uh, warning. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, you know, we had actually issued, uh, the Joint Health Sector Union had actually issued an ultimatum that had elapsed uh, last week. Yeah. 
And uh, because um, the union is a very patriotic union that take cognizance of uh, the situation in the country, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the economic challenges in the country, uh, any time the government appeals to us, we would listen. Uh, but we have been made the whipping boy, the Jews have been made the whipping boy in the health sector, which is quite uh, unfortunate. We issued an ultimatum, and uh, the Nigerian Medical Association became very meddlesome. Uh, they had to start doing it. We joined that to the demands we, uh, we had put out to our employer. Mm -hmm. One of the things that need to be uh, put out clearly is that medical officers, like every other health profession or professional in Nigeria, in the employment of federal government, we are all employees. It is uh, incongruous and out of place. It's quite uh, nauseating for a fellow employee to be the one dictating the terms and conditions of work for his uh, con uh, colleague at workplace. That's why we have issues here. Now, the point is that in 2018, we had a strike action and the government uh, invoked uh, the no work, no pay rule. And uh, till date, our colleagues have not been paid that money. Unfortunately, some other persons that went on strike were paid uh, those outstanding money. Um, again, on the issue of uh, the hazard allowance, we had made a position clear to government that in the past 20 years, and even before then, hazard allowance had been on a flat rate for all persons that are duly exposed to same hazard in same workplace. Uh, unfortunately, government uh, has not been able to be very decisive because they have been shoved as, uh, up and down by uh, uh, Nigerian Medical Association. Um, the current notice we have issued is because we had withdrawn the other one that had expired following the intervention of uh, the uh, Honorable Minister of Health, Honorable Minister of Labor, and I must give it to the Honorable Minister of Labor, he's been top-notch uh, as a conciliator. But what we are saying is that enough of the meddlesomeness of our colleagues in workplace, it is not up to them to dictate the conditions of our work. If they have issues with government, they should engage government uh, on, on their point of argument and allow other workers to uh, negotiate their own terms and conditions with government. It's not uh, the situation where uh, you dictate what we get. Um, now, why we have given another 15 days after a expanded next meeting is because we have consulted with our uh, stakeholders in the uh, health workforce, and uh, they do feel that government have not been able to listen to us. What is the issue here? We, we have the current salary scale, uh, which was produced same time, secularized same date with the common salary scale. It, unfortunately, because the other people are in political corridors, they have been able to get several review, several, about three times review of the consolidated medical salary structure, of, but not even a single review. Whereas the memorandum of agreement we have with government does stipulate clearly that for every consequential adjustment on the commerce, there shall be a reciprocal on the current salary st uh, structure. That is yet to happen. That is a major demand we're putting out to government. I was saying that what is good for the uh, geese is also good for the Ganda, particularly when it is predicated on an extant memorandum of agreement. That is exactly what we're asking. We're not asking for a pay rise. We're asking that having re reviewed the common salary screen three times uh, 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 serially, that a constitutional adjustment be effected on the current salary structure. Because a lot of other allowances are predicated on percentages of this consolidated basic. And so if you continue to up that of the other colleagues we have in workplace, while you keep our own at constants, you short shame our members. Besides, it is not all about remuneration. What conditions are there for our healthcare workers? We are losing our members in their numbers following uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because they are not uh, adequately catered for. Government told us in 2020 that they have an insurance package, but I want to tell Nigerians that People are insured with their particulars. No health worker in Nigeria, as we speak today, has been insured with his definite particulars, which is a provisor in the Insurance Act. You cannot tell me you have taken insurance for 5,000 health workers, and you do arise the insurance uh, 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 for the individual beneficiaries. So these are the challenges we have. We are saying that 
it is important that government comes clean with us, review the coherence uh, structure to bring it to tune with that of uh, uh, the All comments. Right. We are asking that government should pay us the backlog of the 2018 uh, three months salary that they withheld following uh, the industrial action because they have had to pay other workforce. You see the way that Dilly Darling with invoking the no work no pay for national association of resident doctors. It is only in Nigeria, and I repeat, it is only in Nigeria, that students can grant and collapse. I've been, I've been for more than 50 days now, health services. And that is because our government played into their hands. All right, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Ifani, I beg your pardon. Um, there, there's so much, you know, obviously that you, you know, have, um, you know, to pour out. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time this morning. Um, we would have to very likely schedule another conversation with you so you can, we can look at the different angles concerning this uh, conversation and what happens in the next 15 days if the government still fails to uh, yeah. uh, come or follow through with the promises made in the Memorandum of Understanding. Of course, uh, if, if government, right. government we'll would have to, we'll uh, have to wrap uh, up here. On the Dr. Yeah. Ifani, we thank you very much, but we have to continue this conversation another time. Maybe see how it goes for the next 15 days if the government gets in contact with you and what the outcome of this would be. Thank you very much again, Dr. Kasmir Ifani, for your time. And we thank you for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. It's a beautiful, brand new day, Monday, the 20th of September. And we thank you for starting it with us. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Ogbawan. See you tomorrow.